Today I'm gonna build a lithium ion spot welder using super capacitors. If you're new to the channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button. All main parts will be linked in the description. And let's get started. A while back, I created a spot welder using a microwave transformer. It worked quite well and did what it was supposed to do. But as I looked at the comments, a lot of people brought up to my attention that it's pretty dangerous to work with the internals from a microwave. So the alternative would be to use something that can supply a couple of hundred amps, just like the transformer. You might remember this jump starter made out of supercapacitors, which I built in a previous video. Now the reason why I use supercapacitors for this jump starter is because it is able to charge up super fast, but most importantly, can also be discharged very fast, causing hundreds of amps to flow without any damage. For instance, if I charge them up to 15 volts, connect the car battery tester, and measure how much current it can provide, it tells us that the supercapacitors gives a maximum of 637 amps in a short pulse, which should be perfect for spot welding. Since I don't want to burn through the battery when making a spot weld, we're gonna have to build a circuit which will switch the high current from the supercapacitors for a fraction of a second. I came up with this 555 timer circuit, which when the button is pressed, will supply a short pulse to a MOSFET, which will power a relay, ultimately leading to a consistent weld. I created this circuit on a breadboard, and I also added an LED to physically see it in action. Once it's powered up, I'll press the trigger button to light up a blue LED for as low as 50 milliseconds, up to 290 milliseconds. This can be viewed from my oscilloscope. And I gotta say, this pulse is pretty damn consistent giving us a pulse as fast as 48 milliseconds and up to 288 milliseconds if we turn the potentiometer all the way clockwise. Now about the relay, I'm gonna reuse the relay from the jump starter because it is rated for several hundred amps of current. If we connect it to our circuit, we can hear the relay clicking away. I also designed the circuit to produce the same length of pulse no matter if you're pushing the button momentarily or holding it for a long time. I don't know about you, but this is oddly satisfying. And now that we have a working circuit, time to compress it into a circuit board for a more permanent setup. As I'm installing the MOSFET, I do want to note that I'm using a very low resistant MOSFET since they are not too much more expensive than their counterparts and offer some peace of mind knowing it will never overheat even in extreme conditions. After a few hours of soldering, I have to say it came out quite nice. I also added an IC socket instead of having it soldered to the board to make the triple 555 timer easy to replace just in case if it fails. Fitting on a knob for the potentiometer makes it easier to rotate. But since looks is not nearly as important as function, I'll hook up the two wires from the relay, connect power, and... It works! Beautiful! Now to keep all the components together, I originally wanted a 3D printed enclosure, just like from my previous spot welder. But after doing some thinking, I just settled on using a piece of plywood to have this project mounted to it. Using a bench grinder to sand the edges might not be the cleanest option, but is still the quickest, taking about 2 minutes to do so. Once the wood is mostly splinter proof, I'll drill two holes into the wood. After this, I'll add some bigger holes halfway through. All this allows us to feed the bolt through it, which will eventually become flush with the surface after tightening it down. I'll install a couple of washers to give the supercapacitor some space between the wood. And would you look at that, the spacing between the bolts came out perfectly on the first try. Very impressive. Before screwing down the relay, I added some rubber washers. Doing so will eliminate some of the noise. Just listen to the difference. This is without the rubber, and this is with it. 
To properly space the circuit board from the wood, I'll use some threaded inserts, usually used to give fine threads to 3D prints, and then secure it with some 1 inch screws. To supply power to the relay control circuit, I'll keep it simple by just hooking it up to the supercapacitors. This is possible because both the 555 timer and the end channel MOSFET can handle a voltage above 15 volts. Now before hooking up some thick cables for spot welding, let's charge up the supercapacitors to see if it works as it should. After about 5 minutes of charging, I'll short the trigger wire to ground and we should hear a click, right? Well, if you haven't noticed it by now, I mistakenly swapped around the diode's polarity, which created a short circuit. So what I did next was switch around the diode's polarity to hopefully see if this solved the problem. And... It did not. So I went ahead and tested the diode, and sure enough, it was damaged. Now diodes are supposed to read 0.5 volts when using the dedicated diode mode from a multimeter. And in this case, it's just conducting both directions. This is what a good diode is supposed to read. Since there was a lot of smoke earlier, instead of taking any chances, I'll just replace both the diode and the MOSFET. As soon as applying power, the relay just clicks on, which means the triple five timer was damaged as well. So, out with the old, and in with the new. Well... Sounded good so far, and the trigger works perfectly. Before talking about the spot welder cables, I'll secure the wires in place with some hot glue. If you don't know what this is, then basically this is my first spot welder that I built before my YouTube channel. Now since I already made a more portable version of this spot welder, which I did make a video on, I haven't really touched it since. So if there's any use I'll have out of this project, it'll be by donating both the cables and spot welding pen. I know this might seem a little harsh, but I already know that in a few years I would probably get rid of it anyway. So ultimately, reusing some of its parts is kind of better than eventually wasting the whole thing. I'll start by wrapping the cables in some electrical tape, because the insulation looks quite rough. Since solder connections are not as reliable compared to copper lugs, I'll chop the wires, remove its insulation, and install the lugs. I'm not an expert at this, but when I tug at it, there seems to be pretty good connection here. So, I'll put on a piece of heat shrink, and then finish up the rest. I also made a shorter cable to connect the capacitors to the relay. Time to connect the cables. I am gonna have to grind off a bit of copper for the cables to fit well onto the spot welding pen. Nice and snug. What I like most about this welding pen is that it comes with a built-in switch, which means you don't have to use a foot pedal to create a weld. I'll leave a link in the description if you wanna buy one. At this point, I'll zip tie the wires coming from the welding pen, and then solder it to the circuit. The switch has no polarity, so it does not matter what direction it's soldered. The final and arguably the most important part about this spot welder is using the proper prongs. In this case, it's the included copper prongs, which are relatively cheap to replace and last for a very long time. But since I've used these prongs quite a lot, before we test out the spot welder, I'm gonna sharpen them up in order to get more efficient welds. And now that the supercapacitor powered spot welder is complete, it's time to test it out. 
starting with some standard 18650 batteries, which I have already polished the surface. Along with that, I use some standard nickel strips. I'll place the cell in the holder to keep it in place. After all this, the big question is, does it even work? And it does. It is to be expected to have the prongs stick to the nickel strips if you end up sharpening them a little too much like I have. Now while the welds look quite clean, the question is, how strong are they? With the help of some pliers, I'm able to remove the nickel strip. If we have a closer look, we can see that the actual nickel strip ripped instead of breaking the weld. That's some strong weld right there. And with all that in mind, I'm only using the lowest setting at 50 milliseconds. The final test I want to do is pushing this thing to its limits and see if it is capable of welding some nickel strips onto two thick pieces of steel. This weld looks a little weak, so I'll crank up the timing to around the center. This test will see if a charging current of 10 amps is enough to sustain the supercapacitors. As we can see, after making a few welds one after the other, the voltage is still above 14.5 volts and the supercapacitors are about at 110 degrees Fahrenheit, which is way under the 150 degree limit. I also took some slow-mo footage and it seems to be that we're getting a double pulse per weld. This is most probably happening due to the fact that we're using a relay and the contacts are bouncing open and closed. This is not a problem though, because all that matters is that we're getting consistent welds. If you like this video, then make sure to hit that subscribe button, and consider supporting me through Patreon, where you can have early access to my new videos, and I will see you guys in the next video.